Let's take a look at the features choke and spread in Separation Studio. Now, what we're going to do this time, though, remember, Sep Studio has two different engines. It separates raster engines or vector engines. Uh, so let's take a look. If I go to file open here, I just want to show you this. Here we go. This is a standard vector volleyball image, right? So I'm going to hit open, and it's going to give me this window sometimes. Uh, this depending on the size, right? So it's just telling you that you, you want to resize this to 10 uh, inches wide at the max because it, it they sort of default to 10 by 10. You don't have to. You can say, no, just leave it like it is and hit do not resize and open it up. But you notice this. This looks different. And now my interface looks a little bit different. I got some different things available to me across the top, that sort of thing, because it opened, it recognized this as a vector file being an Illustrator file. And then it opened it up in the vector engine, right? So what we can do is we take a look. We got two colors. It found the two spot colors that was used to create this image. Um, you see we got a blue and a brick red, right? So what we need to do, though, is we need to generate a base for this file. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit this base across this button here at the top. If I click on it, this is what's going to control my base, right? So uh, here's my choke. Now, typically what, it work, what we do when we create an underbase is we choke that underbase back so my colors can overlay it. So when you look at it, finished print on a shirt, there's no white peeking out anywhere. It's sort of just choked it back my colors overlay, and then that's what you see, right? That goes straight to the shirt, the garment color. Now, depending on the, how many colors you have, you may want to, if, if there was black in this image, there happens to be none, I could turn off whatever color I don't want an underbase under, right? So if I have black, for instance, I might not want it under that. I just turn it off. But this one, I only have two colors, so I want to go ahead and keep it. And if you know this, is, this choke here, it defaults to 0 0.02. That's like super fine. Um, and that may be good enough for you, right? You may be able to do that, but I'll tell you this. Uh, most times, I recommend people use like a half a point. And the cool thing about this, this is true to size, right? So what I mean by that is in Illustrator, if I say, hey, give me a one-point stroke on something to choke it back, then what is going to happen is it's going to give me a half a point on one side of my line and another half a point on the other. So it'll actually, if a one-point stroke will choke back half a point. So in this instance, what I want to do is I want to choke back a half a point, right? So if I do that, I can add the size of this if I wanted to, like just by clicking here. And it goes from 50.52 to 0.47, close enough, right? But if you wanted to be precise, you could say, give me a half a point and create me a static underbase, right? So now looking here at the bottom, we have a base, our blue, and our brick red. So this is how um, one way we can yeah, we can turn on and off the colors, right, to see our base. I'm going to turn them back on. Or if I grab my base itself and I actually move it over here to put it on top, right, see my little line there? I'm going to let go, so now my white is above it. Uh, I'm going to come over here and just kind of click on this proof positive, and I'll show you why I'll do that in a second. When I zoom in on this guy, whoops, there we go. All right, scroll up a little bit. See that? That is my half a point of my blue, right? So that what that means is it's showing me visually what we choked back. So my white, when we opened the file or when we generated it, we choked it back one half a point. So my blue overlays. So that's just showing to you, proving to you visually that, okay, this thing is set up. It is properly uh, done and it's ready to roll, right? So now I can go ahead and bring it in the uh, or print from here or bring it in the Illustrator template, whatever you, your normal workflow is. So that's one instance. Let's go ahead and close this file, by the way. And we're going to go ahead and open up another one that might be a little different and might come to find out um, that you're going to use this a fair amount. All right. So right now, this is an actual left chest file. It's only three and a half inches by three and a half inches, something, to, you know, for left chest hat, something like that. But I want you to look at is, or we're going to pay attention to here, is these thin lines, right? So if I generated my base, and let me just go, I guess I can go ahead and just do it. So we do a base. Um, if I wanted to choke it back, like say a 0.5 like we did before, right? I guess I, if I grab a little bit too much, there we go. Five, create a static base. And we turn off the teal. Even a half a point, we lose all that information, right? So what we want to do is we want to generate a base, but we're going to keep it the same exact size, right? Because we're going to spread the color instead of choking back the base. 
So we'll right click on this one. Let's go ahead and delete that now. We'll turn teal back on. So this is my image as we're gonna go uh, start with. So let's go ahead and generate a base, right? And I want a base to be the same size. So I just make it down to zero points. It means it's not gonna choke anything at all. I hit create static. And now it's the same exact size if I turn off my teal. As you see, you can see my lines here. My yoga studio looks pretty good. Everything's fine because it's exactly the same size as my color. So I'll put my teal back on here. So now what we're going to do, since it's such thin lines and it's such a small image, we're going to go ahead and spread the color over the base. So remember last time we choked that under base so my colors come over it. This time I'm going to leave my under base exactly like it is, but we're still going to spread the colors so it goes over that base. So here we go. Now, I'm going to spread only the color, so I'm going to turn off my base. I don't want to affect it at all. And since this is only a left chest, I could leave it as default. Um, but let's just go ahead and put it like a, I don't know, maybe a quarter point. It's kind of like a hairline uh, in Illustrator or so. And I'll go ahead and hit Apply. And now it looks the same. doesn't look like anything happened, but watch what happens here. If I move my base, move it behind, right? And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. Look at that. You can see there's my quarter point of we are seeing color because I moved my base to the top and that's the color behind, on the, you know, that's going ex extending past that base, right? So I'm going to grab my base, move it back over here, right? There we go. So that's how I use cho uh, a choke and that's how I use a spread. And to me, I can, there's nothing I can't print using those two bases on this vector engine side.